So hello everybody. This is my first time doing a webinar. I'm pretty excited about this. Not only uh, am I excited because I'm actually getting to do a webinar, but being asked by PMI to talk today is a treat because not only is this PMI's 40th anniversary, but I get to speak to you about my very favorite PMI product, and it's the one that started it all, the PMI Pit Rope. This is what I use all the time. But before I get into the nitty-gritty of this awesome rope, um, I'll share a little bit myself. So I'm 44 um, years old. We can't see your screen yet, so can you um, see if hmm. uh, you can share it? Well, I'm off to a great start on this thing. Let's see. There's a bouncing icon, and it says, show me the screen, show my screen. Aha. That's how we need to do it. Now, let's go back over here. Aha. Uh -huh. Can you see that now? Yep. We can see it now. Perfect. All right. So... Uh, pretty much all it was is this is a picture of the PMI rope, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. Um, let me start off a little by myself so that you can kind of understand why I was chosen to talk about this particular rope. Um, I'm 44 years old, and I am a caver. Now, some of you might not be familiar with that word. Um, spelunker might be a word that you understand. But either way, it just boils down to the same thing, that I like to spend most of my time uh, crawling around under the earth. So my mom and dad have been here since they were literally teenagers because they grew up in the same small town. So whenever my two big brothers and I were born, we just followed along with our parents, of course, going wherever they went. So we were pretty much born into caving, and as a result, I feel more comfortable underground than really I do anywhere else, and caves are absolutely my happy place. I tried to get up some pictures of caving on rope as a kid. Um, I asked mom and dad. They couldn't find any. So I guess being that I was kid number three in the family and the fact that mom and dad skillfully managed to keep all three happy and healthy little cave explorers, the photo sessions had to take a back seat. So um, if you will, uh, just use your imagination a little bit when it comes to uh, pictures of me as a little kid on rope. In my very young years of caving, um, if a rope was needed for negotiating an obstacle or you know a pit or anything in a cave, there were basically only two kinds of ropes to choose from. There was a twisted rope that would cause you to spin around and around and make you completely nauseated. Or there was a braided rope that was so stretchy it was like being on a rubber band. Neither choices were too great. When I was about four years old, my family was attending a national caving convention, just like we did and we still do every summer at a different location each year. I remember seeing a new vendor called Pigeon Mountain Industries advertising a new type of rope for caving. Everyone at Pensions be really interested in this new rope called PMI Pit Rope, designed and produced by cavers for cavers. While I was standing at this new vendor's booth, a giant of a man came from behind the table, towering over me, then smiled and handed me a t-shirt with the PMI logo on it. Now, I don't remember exactly what that shirt looked like, but here's an old PMI logo, so it might have looked something similar to this one. That shirt looked more like a dress on my tiny little body, hanging down almost to my ankles, but I was so proud to advertise this new company. Word of this new company was going all around the convention that week, and I remember my parents saying that this new rope could be a total game changer for keeping. From then on, through my childhood and as an adult, I always considered that giant of a man Steve Hudson, my mentor and friend, who unfortunately passed away in 2013. It's difficult to really understand the specific demands of a caving rope until a person has spent a lot of time in the cave environment. Fortunately, the four cavers who founded PMI had the magic combination of lots of caving experience and rope know-how 
to create the ultimate caving roof. So you're probably asking, why do cavers need to have a different rope than rock climbers? Take a look at this picture. This is a brand new coil of PMI hit rope. <sighs> Isn't it dreamy? I just could look at that all day. And here is what the roof, look, roof rope looks like in a cave. This picture was taken on route before we even reached the pit where we needed to run that rope. Caves are wet. They're slippery. This is actually a boot. If you look closely, that's someone's boot with a dry case and a camera sloshing through the mud and water in a uh, New York cave that we went to. Not a lot of uh, room to move around there. Rocks are jagged and abrasive, and a lot of times pits seem to be in very inconvenient places inside caves. Here's a picture of a friend of ours rigging a rope um, that looks like a PMI Hudson Classic Pro Maxware he's using in that picture. Just getting to the place where the ropes needed commonly involves squeezing through spaces barely body sized, and it very much depends on whose body is trying to squeeze through where. Maneuvering tight belly crawls with sharp rocks to snag that coiled rope every few feet. Swimming through water. Attach the rope to an ankle as we drag it through never-ending gravel crawls, or swim our way through mud so thick we call them hog wallers. There are certainly no style points for negotiating difficult obstacles underground. The frequent use of elbows, knees, chin, rear ends, or any other body parts, or anyone else's body parts, are perfectly acceptable. Whatever it takes to get from point A to point B in a cave. Oh yeah, and caves are totally dark. Whatever light cavers have on their bodies is all, all that's given off underground. The reason why most pictures of cavers are taken at cave entrances is because once inside the cave, most pictures turn out looking like this. Maybe I'm painting a less than desirable picture of what caving is like, but for me and many other cavers, being underground is absolutely heavenly. And did I mention that caves are muddy? Not everybody has a clear picture of how different the cave environment is from, say, a, a clean rock face. Rock climbers generally use a rope as more of a safety net to arrest their falls should they miss their grip on a handhold. The ropes they use are made to be nice and stretchy, or another word is dynamic, to help absorb the shock of a falling climber. These are actually two cavers in this picture, but they enjoy rock climbing as well. But we cavers, on the other hand, we must actually attach ourselves to the rope with gear and hang from it, using the rope as our means of transportation. The less the rope stretches, the better. We are completely dependent on our rope to support us. It's how we get up and down, or rather down and up in caves. In fact, cavers call rope our nylon highway. And as you can see, it's quite a job to clear gear after a caving trip. PA rope is very static, especially my pit rope is very static, meaning that this particular type of rope 
was designed to have very little to no stretch to it. So cavers descend and ascend directly on the rope. This feature is really critical since the less bounce and stretch allows a more efficient climb on the rope. Climbing on pit rope, even really long drops, hundreds of feet, is really nice because it offers very little give and spares unnecessary physical exertion. It's tiring enough as climbing on a rope, let alone if it's a bouncy one. It exceeds the standards of the CI-1801 as a static rope with less than 6% elongation at 10% of the minimum braking strength. So it's, it's really an awesome rope. It's, there's very, very little stretch at all. Another critical requirement for caving rope is that it must be extremely abrasion resistant. You can see in this picture some of the sharp edges we have to deal with. So PMI rope, as well as all the other PMI classic static ropes, they have a 16 carrier sheath design. Sounds kind of funky, but here's a little bit of an illustration. Um, 16 carriers, it refers to the number of yarn bundles used to create the braid that makes up the sheath of the rope. So this representation, you can see the 16 circles around the big white core. Although PMI makes some of their braid designs with 32 or 48 carriers for other needs, the 16 carrier nylon sheath makes a long living durable rope that's well suited for caving. Because the fewer carriers or the braid bundles for the sheath allows PMI to use a thicker, more durable sheath yarn. PMI's pit rope has the tightest sheath weave of all of the PMI's static ropes, so it makes it the number one choice for abrasion resistance. And pair that with Balmer's strong nylon core, and PMI's pit rope is a star performer in a caving environment. Pit rope boasts the highest breaking strength of all the 11 millimeter nylon PM ropes at a whopping 31 kilonewtons for its minimum breaking strength. The 11 millimeter or 7 16th inch diameter of pit rope strikes a really nice balance in that it's thick enough to be extremely abrasion resistant and hardy, yet it's lightweight enough to transport long distances and haul through the caves. Of course, Unexpected things do happen underground. Even when we abide the strictest safety practices, this is a huge spaghetti tangle of my pit rope. One of the, one of the things about the stiffer rope is, is it's, it doesn't really knot very easily, but wow, it sure is hard to tame at times. It's almost like um, it's almost like barbed wire, but it's it's wonderful tough stuff. You just have to learn how to tame it, which Obviously, these two guys were having a hard time doing. Although rare, sometimes the rock will fall and hit the rope, or a sharp edge goes unnoticed where the rope is rigged. And sometimes these incidents have completely cut through or worn through the rope sheath, but the core was still perfectly intact. To the rigorous standards of PMI, these events have been nothing more than just minor annoyances meaning uh, it's time to cut out that bad part of the rope and make two smaller ropes without where the low one used to be. And let's keep on using that rope. In addition to the extreme abrasion resistance and excellent static quality of pit rope, PMI's unique manufacturing process of all of the ropes ensure a consistent thickness throughout the entire length of the rope so you have a really smooth rappel or a climb without any lumps or surprises. MI is not only ISO 9001 certified to conform to universal safety standards, but the ropes are also constantly being in-house at the PMI factory in Lafayette, Georgia using two different means created and engineered out of Europe. These machines test and measure the minimum breaking strength of a rope when it's pulled and stretched as well as when a rope is shock loaded. So that's pretty cool. Breaking in house testing goes well above and beyond normal measures of rope safety requirements. And this is just one more reason why PMI produces the highest quality ropes. I guess I should have turned my email off. Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia, where the three states come together, it's commonly referred to cavers as TAG, 
where the Cumberland Plateau has just the right geology to create the highest concentration caves in the United States. So it's no surprise that the PMI headquarters is located in the heart of TAG in Lafayette, Georgia. With over 15,000 caves, TAG is kind of like a, a mecca for cavers. All those little black dots you see on the screen, those are caves that have been represented. Steve Hudson was not only a visionary when it came to creating the perfect rope for cavers, but he also saw that there was a real need for specialist rescue training for the environment, which necessitates using very difficult, very different techniques from wilderness rescue. Steve was instrumental in developing the National Rescue Commission, which is an organization that trains and coordinates rescues, uh, resources for cave rescues. He also developed a working relationship between cavers and the local authorities here in TAG so that when a rescue is needed in a cave, the local authorities know that they're really trained cave rescuers to call on. I've been through the NCRC, or National Cave Rescue Commission, classes, and they're really thorough, and they're also a whole lot of fun. We need to practice rescues. You can see here in this picture that PMI ropes are being used for this practice. And although Steve has passed, PMI still values and supports ongoing cave rescue training. So PMI ropes have taken me to some really cool places under this earth. Here's one of my favorite caves. It's called Lechaguilla Cave in New Mexico. It's located inside the Carlsbad Caverns National Park. Some of you may have seen pictures of these amazing um, gypsum chandeliers. Those are in Lechaguilla Cave. I love the temperature of the cave nice and warm as well as you get to do some nice vertical work in there and I get to play around on my PMI ropes. Around 1998 I was asked to co-star with a fellow caver Hazel Barton in an ice caving documentary called Journey in Amazing Caves. Although being filmed didn't really excite me too much, the opportunity to go caving in exotic locations for free certainly did. The filming of the movie took us above the Arctic Circle, 60 miles out on the middle of the ice cap of Greenland, to explore the ice caves and deep crevasses. Then we went into the caves and the jungles of the Yucatan Peninsula for film. And finished off filming in a cave 700 feet above the floor of Grand Canyon. This is actually a winch that was built by some professionals to raise and lower the movie crew who had no idea really how to do any verbal work. And yes, they were using PMI rope on them. That's at the entrance of the cave. A little bit burned out, but you can see some of the cliffs on the other side. Well, two ropes hanging down and I, uh, I, I have another on me. All three of those are PMI pit ropes. So once the movie premiered in 2001, I spent a solid year on a speaking tour, and I traveled across the country making appearances where the movie was shown, and I climbed and rappelled into their theaters or off the side of their buildings or um, the city's tallest skyscrapers. You know, although I do prefer the um, PMI pit rope for real caving. Um, for this tour, I actually chose to use PMI's Hudson Class Pro Rope. Um, it's an easy bend sheath. It's more flexible and I could easily fit a 300 foot coil inside my suitcase with all the other stuff that I needed for my tour. And some of my other cave uh, places that are my favorites were Iceland. I've been there twice. Um, this is a cave where it's actually been carved out by geothermal water and uh, made a cave under the glacier. So it's a glacier cave. And let's see, you might be able to see some water in this picture, but you can certainly see some steam. I'll go back to this one. Anyway, the water running through there is extremely hot. 
And all of a sudden, while we were in this cave doing a survey, trying to make a map of the cave, uh, the barometric pressure changed because of the weather outside. So the steam, which was normally blowing out, started blowing back into the cave from the, the geothermal water. And we had a major situation on our hands and had to get out very quickly because um, ice was just falling. Ice blocks were all around us. And uh, it, it was almost not a pretty sight. This is in the rift of Iceland that I actually got to repel into, and there's geothermal water in the bottom of that. It separates the, uh, the plates from North America and Eurasia. So that's fun. This is a really poor picture, but if you, if you look at the very bottom of your screen in the picture, um, you can see there's some PMI pit rope going into a lava tube with a pit entrance right at the base Mount Sneffels in Iceland. New Zealand also has some really nice diversity of caves, so I enjoyed being there as well. So I feel I'm a pretty good judge of rope character by now. I've always been big on safety. But now I have a husband and a daughter to consider uh, and to me, so it's absolutely of paramount importance to me that what we use are the safest out there. This is actually a picture of my husband Brent proposing to me while we're both on rope, PMI pit rope, um, in a pit in Alabama. And yes, he did have the ring tied to a string so that it wouldn't fall down the pit. So that's why the only rope in my family's gear cache are made by PMI. This is our daughter Scout hanging on PMI rope. And this is how we would let her swing. She was really little to get her used to being in a harness and hanging on rope. And she just thought that was the best thing ever. I think right here, this is the Hudson Classic. Let's see, this is, see, that's the Hudson Classic Pro Easy Bend, I believe. No, it's the Hudson Classic Pro Max Square is what that rope is. Pardon me. This was her first real pit, and she was so proud of herself. So although I live in Georgia, and PMI is loaded in Georgia, I'm embarrassed to admit that I had never been to tour the facility, the very place that manufactures the rope that I hang my butt off of. In the town of Lafayette, heart of the country, where we go caving almost every weekend. So I decided to change that. About two weeks ago, I made a trip to Lafayette visit with my friends at PMI. From the moment I walked into the reception area, I felt like a kid going to Disney World for the first time. You can ask anybody who was in that building that I had a goofy smile on my face the whole time. It was absolutely fantastic. I had a chance to see behind the scenes where all the magic happens. It was an absolute thrill to walk the long aisles of shelves filled with rope and hear the whir of the ropes being made. And it was also really comforting to see with my own eyes the care and attention to detail that every employee in that building exhibited toward the ropes. I watched the tedious process of every single millimeter a rope runs slowly and methodically through the bare hands of a rope inspector. Although there are machines in place to detect any problems in the rope, that's just not good enough for PMI standards. It's that human factor that trumps all else. 
This is Spout, our daughter, now. As you can tell, she's very comfortable on rope. But my mom and dad were right. Pitch and Mountain Industries changed the caving world forever, making vertical caving safer and better with the creation of pit rope. Since the day we were first introduced to PMI, my family's always trusted our lives to PMI rope. I feel honored that Steve Hudson and the other three cavers who founded PMI wanted me, a little kid way back then, to help advertise this amazing product. And that was 40 years ago. And I've never stopped being one of PMI's biggest fans. I really thank you all for your attention. I know it's a little shorter than what you might have expected. It might not be such a bad thing, but I would love to take some of your questions. All right. Thanks, Nancy. And um, uh, like you said, we're going to question. So if you have any, you can go type them into the chat slash question section of your panel and we'll get to them. Um, and we do have one right now. So the question is, um, what was the uh, deepest pit how you've ever done and how long was it How long? and how long did it you to tell or climb? Kind of a multiple part question. Well, my pit actually is 586 feet deep, and that is actually a pit in Ellison's Cave here in the state of Georgia. It's called Fantastic Pit. Okay. Um, and um, how long did it take you to climb that? Ooh, that's a really good question. As far as how long it took to climb, um, it was a while back, so I don't quite recall. My guess would be somewhere around 40 minutes. Okay. And um, the other question is, um, what is, when is the differences, when are the times when you use pit rope as opposed to Hudson Classic Pro with Max in a cave? Well, that is a really good question. Um, Hudson Classic, uh, ugh, HUD, that's cool, isn't it? Hudson Classic Pro Maxwear. Um, it's slightly stiffer than like having the Easy Benji. It still has really good abrasion resistance. Um, personally, I, if I have my choice, it's always going to be the PMI pit rope. Really on what lengths we happen to have on end. Uh, or if somebody else might, they might be using their inverted Hudson Classic Pro Maxwear. Uh, uh, Easy Bend certainly has its place. She's more flexible, certainly much easier to tie your knots in, not quite as abrasion resistant. And um, I would just much rather, I, my, my personal preference is the, the stiff pit rope. A lot of it really just depends on personal preference because it's all, I mean, it's all totally bomber and very safe rope. I think a lot of it just comes down to personal choice. Okay. Um, and that is the only questions that we have right now. So if anybody else has any, we can definitely get to them. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, wrapping this up. So let me switch over my screen. Give me one second here to get this out. Um, okay, so while I'm doing that, uh, there's an option. How support you of protecting cave fauna, specifically cave crickets? <laughs> that must be of mine. But absolutely, um, I'm very particular and very much an advocate of protecting all living things, um, particularly since I spend a lot of my time underground, um, the underground critters. So I would never kill anything or try to damage anything and am very careful of where my footing is. I'm not a huge fan of the cave crickets, but, you know, I'm visiting their home, so I have to respect them. All righty. 
Um, so let me get this transferred over. You should be able to see my screen shortly. And if anybody else has any other questions, um, feel free to type them in to the chat slash question then. And um, if you do have further questions or if you end up watching uh, later on in the PMI on the PMI website, you can email Nancy those questions at her email on the screen. And the PMI webinar series hosts webinar frequently, so you can keep an eye on PMIRope.com/webinars for dates and topics. You can also subscribe to PMI E News and Facebook and Twitter. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, for future dates and topics, as well as just general stuff going on. Um, I, um, so that is it for the presentation, but there is one more question. Um, can you update on the white nose syndrome in kids? Well, the white nose syndrome obviously is, is a very, very sad situation in the bats. Uh, generally during hibernation, they become irritated with this fungus that's growing on them and uh, wake up and use all of their resources that's stored. Um, it's still an ongoing thing. We still practice, uh, we're still practice uh, decontamination of our gear to hopefully um, not uh, cause any kind of cross-contamination should we um, happen to be carrying any kind of the white nose with us from cave to cave. Um, unfortunately, I think it's just one of those things that's just nature's just going to have to work its way through it and the, the stronger species are going to survive and hopefully it won't eradicate any species of bat. It might you know, lessen the numbers, but hopefully they'll bounce back uh, within time and be strong because of it. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much for uh, watching the presentation and thanks Nancy for presenting it. We hope that everybody had a great day and thanks again. Thank you.